All right, you guys. So today we're going to be talking about a video. This one was actually posted in my Discord, and it was also uh, sent to me via DMs uh, because I'm actually mentioned in this video. Now, normally, um, normally I am... I, I don't watch these videos at all before they go up, but the person that sent it to me was like, hey, you know what, it uh, might be a good idea for you to kind of check it out just to kind of see, because she does mention you, just so you're not caught off guard. So I did check out uh, like the first half of this video. Um, but so today we're going to be talking about um, this video from Abby Sharp that's called, I guess I'm not anti-diet or body positive. And she says, we need to chat. Um, so let's see. Well, I mean, I've seen the video, but if you guys haven't seen the video yet, uh, let's see what it's all about. I think we need to chat. Also, I want to make it very clear, okay, for those of you guys that are watching this after the fact, or you might be listening right now, the audio is jacked up, not on my end, okay? It's jacked up on her end. <laughs> so I don't know why, but for some reason, it only comes out of the left or right. It, it's, it's messed up. It's not my fault. Nothing I can do about it, okay? So I'm just letting you guys know before I hear people complaining. I, I, there's nothing I can do about it. All right. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome back to Abby's Kitchen. It's good to be here. For today's video, I'm feeling like I need to get something off my chest that has really been bothering me. And I'm feeling pretty vulnerable about it because it's kind of controversial stuff. And I don't like stirring up in my own professional dietetics community <laughs> i just like doing it on the internet no, i'm just kidding <laughs> uh but before i get into it i'm stalling here folks just a reminder to of course please be kind in the comments and if you are new here don't forget to subscribe and ring that little bell so that you never miss a video okay so about a month ago, while I was on my pseudo mat leave and obviously kind of sucking at it, I read an essay that really kept me up at night. So this, the essay or the article that she's talking about, we reacted to on stream and <laughs> it was, <laughs> I mean, it was one of the most ridiculous things. I have ever read in my entire life, okay? So just just know that. Like even more so than the breastfeeding and the pumping and the rocking a newborn sleep kind of thing. It was just like always on my mind. But basically this essay called The Unbearable Whiteness and Fat Phobia of Anti-Diet Dietitians suggested that thin white female RDs like me, I guess, have stolen and monetized the body positive movement. So this was this was an article that was like all about how again it was another gatekeeping trashy useless not at all helpful article that was basically saying you're not allowed to be this thing if you are not also this thing. Again, I just think it's useless and it's not helping anyone and all it is doing is dividing more than it's bringing together and it, i seriously just useless now it's actually a pretty intense article and i even saw obese to beast try to comment on it in a live and he was struggling with a lot of the academic language and the feminist theory concepts etc so this is where <laughs> This is where I got called out, right? And this is why, why it was sent to me so many times. It's frustrating hearing someone, she's obviously a very academic person. She has a lot of, she has degrees, she went to college. She has very, she's very smart, okay? Um, I am not. <laughs> like I am the opposite of that, okay? I, I was in special ed growing up. I had an IEP. I went to college for a year. I dropped out because I am not I'm not smart, okay, as far as if we're talking about book smarts, if we're talking about schooling, okay? But the the word that she used, struggle, oh, man. I don't know if anyone else can relate to this, but that just hurts. Uh, not, And I'm not – I don't think Abby's a bad person, okay? So please don't think I'm trying to sit here and be like, Abby, you're a terrible – I don't think she's a bad person. But using the word struggle with a kid, 
and I'm not a kid anymore, but with a person that has had that has learning disabilities that has heard struggle, <laughs> like I've heard the word struggle my whole life, okay? Like th- being like told I have this disability, that disability, like it's just frustrating because I wasn't really struggling. I was, <laughs> I guess I was struggling to understand how unbelievably stupid the article was and how useless it was, okay? Not because I'm some idiot that doesn't understand these words. Like maybe I don't understand these overly like super long, like not at all helpful words. Like I feel like if you are going to make an argument, okay? If you are going to make an argument that is based like and you're trying to actually change people's minds and you can't use words that everyone understands, you're not making a good argument. Like that's how I feel, right? And so it's just frustrating when people are like he was struggling to understand the academic language. It's like no, 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 no. That academic language shouldn't be in it if you're really trying to get other people to understand what the frick you're saying, right? Like okay. Let's move on. But I would say it's still definitely worth a read if you can, so I'm going to link it below. Don't read it, okay? <laughs> Just save, save yourself. Don't do it. <laughs> but the article's author called out a bunch of straight-sized, aka thin, anti-diet dietitians for appropriating the body positive movement for their own financial gain. Um, to summarize, I thought I would read off a quote from the author in the original piece. She said, I... Okay, so we're going to speed this up because she's just reading from this. uh, She's just going to be reading from this article. So there's no reason. We'll just put it on. Let's see. Is this too fast? Not of the ADDs that feign eating desserts or pizza or something equally demonized for pictures, but they post with captions like, no foods are bad, or you don't have to work out to earn food. I'm mad at the ADDs who say that you can still love your body and want to be smaller. I'm absolutely pissed at the ADDs who stand in their mirrors or on their beach to display their minor bloating or the small dimples in their thighs. They post. Oh, dude. Like, again, it's this is exactly. And it's funny because I think for the mo- <laughs> for most of the rest of the video, me and Abby are going to agree. OK, so, hey, Abby, me and you together um, agreeing on things. I think that it's it's again like I was saying it's gatekeeping. It's basically saying you are not fat enough. Like that's pretty much what the whole article was saying was like you're not fat or black enough. Um, it's just frustrating when people bring in race to something about size. I just whatever because it turns it into a whole minefield. And as a, a white man, it's like oh man, I'm not I'm I am not trying to be labeled as a racist. Okay, like that is not something that I want. But at the same time, like I think that it is incredibly frustrating for people to say basically you're not fat enough to be able to talk about having rolls or you're not fat enough to be able to talk about having dimples or you're not fat enough to talk about having this or having this problem or having this insecurity it's just like for what reason like who is that helping Post before and after pictures a minute a year a decade apart to show how much better their bodies became once they quit dieting or to show how even spelt bodies in spandex can be less perfect if they pull their waistbands down and that no matter how many rolls they have they're still the same fit women they always were the white hot rage I feel when these women tell me to flaunt my body that I'm still sexy no matter what my size because they're sexy at their size in the position they feel fattest in. Again, it's just frustrating because when people are typically making these posts, right, if we're talking about these 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 straight sized white women, like they're probably talking from their own ex- well, they're definitely talking from their own experience so they're not going to sit here and be like I'm making this post for the 300 pound you know black woman or hispanic woman or whatever like no obviously they're not they're not trying to say like hey you should flaunt your body like I'm sure that they would if you asked them they would say yeah you should do it too but they're coming from their own experience and they're probably talking to people that have similar experiences and and feel the similar way as as they do if you are an anti diet dietitian and you do any of these things brand my words in your mind you are diet culture. There is no way to be a thin white female ADD and do the things I've described or screen grabbed above without promoting diet culture and fat phobia and whiteness. By portraying your miniature rolls and folds as things you love despite their existence, despite the way they distance you from perfection, you are not only saying that my fat body is inherently worse than yours, but you're subliminally communicating that rolls and folds are only okay and normal and sexy on a body like yours. So it's, again, it's like, by you saying that I struggle with accepting my body that might not be, you know, I might not be morbidly obese, but I might just be a little bit overweight or I might not like my roles. So by you saying that, that in turn makes me feel like you think my body is really gross. And again, 
like no one is saying that that is you 100% putting your own opinion and you comparing yourself to this other person if you were to just see what they felt and be like oh wow they struggle with their body and they are trying to find a way to love themselves and not be like well they struggle with their body and I feel like my body's worse than theirs so they must think mine's disgusting like dude no one is saying that no one no one made that claim at all so thin so white so unbearably conventional and by implying you're equally hurt by diet culture as a fat black or brown person is you're just straight up lying for your own gain when thin white women use their womanhood to invade the body liberation space while simultaneously benefiting from whiteness and thinness when they violate the space to enrich themselves as anti-diet dietitian saviors who get it and have been there and can save you from yourself they are committing a violation they are being violent oh man dude this part was the one that got me when it was like you're you're committing violence by trying by trying to help other people right because regardless of if i disagree with what like some of these anti-diet dietitians might say um like to say that they're committing violence like <sighs> they are hurting people in a way white people have always hurt and by using anti-diet dietetics as both scientific legitimacy and a woke signal they are protecting themselves from criticism and accountability while doing so okay so i want to make it clear because i'm seeing people in the chat she's not saying like she's reading from the quote okay so she's she is going to go on and for the most part i disagree with some of the stuff okay so she is not saying th th these aren't her words she's she's reading the art article okay <laughs> everyone she's reading the article right now still and i think she's about to go into what she thinks about it but like chill out okay she's reading the article i was just disagreeing with the article which i've already done but it's just hard not it's hard to just listen and not say anything Whew. intense right I read this and I read it and I read it again and I let it sink in for weeks. And I was thinking so much about it that I ended up messaging my colleague and partner in crime, Abby Langer, on a Saturday morning, which was a holiday actually, about it, who you might also recognize from my channel in videos like these. Now, she's also the author of the forthcoming book, Good Food, Bad Diet, which I have an advanced copy of and it's absolutely amazing. Okay, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to call Abby out here, but wow, bad optics to read a thing that was talking about how anti-dietitian, anti-diet dietitians are... <laughs> I'm just it's just funny anti-diet dietitians are uh profiting off of you know <laughs> health at every size or body pl positivity and then just plug something like come on man <laughs> you don't just think for a second like probably not the best time to plug a book you know oh man <laughs> just, oh okay sorry but all weekend long Abby and I were feverishly texting back and forth, hashing out our own questions, our thoughts, and concerns with our own use of these terms and concepts in our own practice. So I thought I would share some of these thoughts with you and be totally transparent that I have not figured it out yet. Like I am still literally in talks with myself as a person and as a professional about where I stand in this really messy world of dietetics. So I think that that's important because it's even, it's even, so even someone that is a, you know, a professional, right? As a dietitian, like her, her whole channel is based on, you know, like I feel like I know what's what's probably right or best. She is still saying that she is still learning, okay? And that's incredibly important because a lot of us will see these people as uh, authorities and we think everything that they say must be true. But she is saying herself, and I think that's great that she's saying this because it's true, right? Is that she is still learning, okay? And that's important. But I'm human and I'm not perfect and I would love to hear your thoughts in response to mine. So let's have a candid conversation. First of all, here's what I know. The body positivity or fat acceptance movement was started by black women in the 1960s to encourage women to celebrate their body as it is without shame while also advocating for more equal treatment of fat bodies. Okay, so I think it's interesting that she says right there that the body positivity or fat acceptance movement. So basically they're, they're, she's saying that they're interchangeable. It's the same thing. I don't necessarily agree with that and trying to debunk what she just said is like mind-numbing and honestly almost pointless because there are so many different places that like no body positivity started because of this or no body positivity started because of this or fat acceptance started because of this or fat acceptance started because of here and this and that i honestly i'm not even gonna go i'm not i'm just not gonna go into it of course, when you look up body positive or anti-diet hashtags, you'll now see it's largely being used by average size white women. So like no greater than size 16 or even very petite women, well, like me. So am I in the wrong for using it? Well, here's- No, I don't believe you are. What I think. I believe that body positivity is for everyone. 
I totally understand why certain groups want to claim terms like body positivity for their own, but I don't think you should have to be fat or BIPOC to spread the really important message about loving and taking care of your body. And I, again, like I said, we're going to agree on most stuff from here on out. And I 100% agree with, with that, 100%. As someone in a smaller body, like a socially accepted body, I can fully appreciate that I have no lived experience with oppression. But I also think that the social pressure to be thin is everywhere. Like diet culture is everywhere. And straight sized folks like me need this message as well. Like we are not immune. So it's interesting that she says right there, someone in a, a thin body, right, in a small body, I have no um, lived experience with oppression. But at the same time, a lot of these uh, diet dietitians, anti diet dietitians. A lot of these people will then go in and talk to really obese people or really overweight people, and basically be like, "I know what's best for you. I know what you should do." When it's like, I mean, you might have some some insight, but like, you've never lived. You don't know what it's like to be severe to a point where your weight is genuinely scaring you. Like until you've lived that, like you you can't possibly understand what that feels like. Like you can't possibly understand what it's like to go through that. So I, I thought that was an interesting point that she kind of went over because you also don't know what it's like to be in a, a body that is severely overweight as well. And I don't think it's a bad thing for fat people to have thin allies. Honestly, we all need to work together to change the system that insists that we change our body regardless of its starting size. I have to be honest, um, in the past, I felt a bit more offended by thin people complaining publicly about their bodies. So in my video on Blogilates, for example, I did make a comment in haste about her discussing her dissatisfaction with her body when it was already more aesthetically desirable than 99.9% .9 of the people who were watching her channel. At the time, I just felt like she wasn't reading the room. And while I knew it was totally normal to feel that way, I just felt like a disclaimer and acknowledgement of her thin privilege was needed to just simply be a little bit more sensitive to her larger body viewers. Now, so it's like, I feel we've we've talked about Cassie or blog a lot on the channel and it's like she's been attacked so many times for just like talking about her size and like the, the fact that Abby herself who I mean she was like pregnant at the time but it's not like she was like super overweight even felt like she needed to um, she needed to like not like acknowledge the fact that she's thinner than most people when it's like okay just because like just because you might be thinner than most other people that might be watching your content or maybe not even that that might not even be true right but just because you're not considered obese like the fact that that makes it so you can't talk about hey i, I want to have some goals i want to work on some things i want to you know uh, challenge myself and maybe my body will change in the process like that is not a bad like it's it's there's nothing wrong with doing that like that doesn't make you a bad person at all now, I've since done a lot of thinking about that, and I've done my own self-exploration as to why those comments of hers were even bothering me in the first place. And aside from the fact that I'm Canadian, and we're pretty concerned trying to make sure everyone's feelings are accounted for, I honestly couldn't fault her for those thoughts or the desire to make her small body even smaller. I don't want to delegitimize someone else's experience of body dissatisfaction or discomfort, regardless of how good I think they look. And while I still do think it's a respectful thing to acknowledge your thin privilege as part of a public body transformation journey, I don't think that you should have to refrain from feeling discomfort in your body or even talking about it just because you're thin. So that brings me to a question that I've been asking. So I think that it's good that she, so basically she was saying that she said this one thing in the past and now she doesn't necessarily feel the same way. Um, I think it's kind of, I don't know, it's, it's strange to me that if, like, if you, Basically what she's saying is like it, it might be a good idea if you want to lose a little bit of weight or you want to change your body in any in any way. Um, you should also be like, I know that there are people bigger than me. And like, dude, I just I feel like that's so unnecessary. Like if you are 200 pounds and you want to lose 50 pounds because you feel like you'll be healthier, you shouldn't be like, I understand I'm not 300 pounds or 400 pounds. But I still like, dude, why? I just I just don't understand how that is necessary at all asking myself with regards to this whole body positivity isn't for thin white women issue. This is getting technical, but what is the weight cutoff for when it's okay to talk about body positivity? Do I need to be obese or just slightly overweight? And what if I'm recovering from an eating disorder and showing my belly roll feels like a huge leap? Yep, exactly. What 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 is what is it? Or then if we look at intersectionality, what if I'm black but thin or white but fat, but not both at the same time? So like who exactly gets to use the term? And who the no one. <laughs> no one. Throw it in the trash. We're not using it anymore. We need to come up with new terms, and then we can separate who's allowed to use them, and then we'll be good to go, okay? Then we'll be, we don't have to worry about this anymore. <laughs> Heck sets these arbitrary rules. Like, what is the algorithm to determine who is worthy of embracing this movement? I don't have answers for these. 
But I think of this similar to how some of you often ask the question, what is the cutoff for health at every size? So she she doesn't have answers, and I think the 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 answer to it is like there there is there shouldn't be a cutoff. <laughs> like there shouldn't be. It should be everyone should be able to use it because everyone struggles with their body. Everyone has issues. Not well not everyone, but like every in every weight class someone has an issue with their body and it, you know what i'm saying like it's it's silly to me to want to even think about i we need to cut it off for a certain group of people like no let everyone use it you know like at what point does a higher weight actually become unhealthy well if you were to ask a Hayes advocate or health at every size advocate they would say that there is no weight cut off and that you would use the same counseling methods and encourage the same health behaviors regardless of whether or not somebody is 150 pounds or 550 pounds and on that note, Abby and I were chatting about something really powerful that she elaborated on in a blog post of hers that I'm gonna link below. But it's like, what do you have to do or not do to maintain your body positivity? By body positive advocate standards, it seems pretty clear that if you intentionally try to lose weight by dieting or exercising or having plastic surgery or weight loss surgery, those are not acts of body kindness and body positivity. And that's so ridiculous, dude. Like, literally, who cares? Whatever you feel makes you feel more positive about your body, that should be considered body positive. That's what I think. You know, as long as you're maybe not hurting yourself and not starving yourself. But like, why? I don't, it's... But what about other ways of changing your body? Like dyeing your hair, getting eyelash extensions, Botox, or acrylic nails. Like, where is the line drawn? There is none! There is no line. It's arbitrary and pointless. That's the freaking point. Like, that's what's so frustrating is that you can have someone get Botox and get their, their lips injected. They can get cheek implants, like, you know, like Tess Holiday, and it's no one bats an eye. And everyone's like, oh, that's great. Get it, slay queen, all this stuff. But if, if Tess Holiday wants to lose weight, she wants to lose 50 pounds, she is now not body positive. Like, what the heck, dude? That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense, dude. Like, just think about that. Like, the fact that you can get eyelash extensions, you can literally get tattoos on your, you know, your lips so you don't have to get more, you don't have to put on freaking lipstick anymore. You can get implants, you can get freaking, you get boob implants, you can get butt implants, you can get freaking injections in your face, and that's totally fine, body positive. But the second that you want to lose weight is not body, it, it, dude, it doesn't make any sense. I guess what I'm trying to point out with all of this is when you start to make rules about who can use the term body positive and who can't, you start to question the ideology behind said rules. You start to see little cracks in the logic. And to me, the only reasonable solution to that is allowing everyone the authority to interpret it in whatever way they feel serves and helps them. So here's where I stand right now, which might put me at odds with the body positive, health at every size, anti-diet, and some might argue intuitive eating movements. First, I do not believe that all intentional weight loss efforts or changes in diets with a desire to lose weight are examples of disordered eating, poor body image, hating your body, or mental instability. I agree with that, obviously. <laughs> I do not think diets intrinsically lead to eating disorders. Hard stop. There are subsets of the population for whom engaging in any kind of purposeful restriction is going to be problematic and unhealthy, physically and or psychologically. But there are lots of people who can count calories, who can get on the scale every week, who can cut out certain foods or use dieting apps without it impacting their mental health. They can do these things for periods of time and then let them go when they aren't working for them, rather than obsess to the point of it taking over their life. Second, being fat does not mean you're unhealthy, but excess body fat can and does play a role in issues like high blood pressure, blood sugars, joint pain, infertility, heart disease, cancer risk, kidney and liver diseases, sleep disorders, etc. To deny this would be an insult to people with this lived experience and also just to the research. Dude, Abby, 100% based right there. Holy thank, I didn't get this far in the video, so this is the first time I heard this. Thank you. That's all I want to say right there because, yes, just thank you because <laughs> you're right, you know? Like, that's true. But weight is just one variable or risk factor for any disease. And thin people suffer from all these diseases all the time as well. However, thin people are often offered alternative treatments that fat people are not because the medical system often tends to see a large body and just sends that patient away to change it. That's true. And I've said this many times. Like when, when people just fixate on lose weight and there's like, dude, well, we could, yes, maybe lose weight might be a good thing in the long run, but like, let's figure out why I'm feeling this way. Maybe it's not related to my, maybe it's something else, right? It, it's frustrating when people just fixate on 
the weight and that's like all that people worry about right when we're talking about medical professionals like that isn't helpful and that is a true thing that i think like the health at every size movement is trying to fix that i am a hundred percent on board for so while a lot of hate proponents will say that the data linking weight to disease is due to weight stigma in the healthcare system and therefore poor medical care i would say yes that is absolutely happening and it probably does play a devastating role but i don't think that the excess weight itself is benign so I think unfortunately we see a potential health problem, aka being overweight, turn into a larger health problem when equitable and fair healthcare isn't accessed. Now third, I've said this before in my video right here, but I believe in meeting people where they are. Even though I know that most people who try to lose weight will gain it back statistically, if this is what an individual wants to do, I fully respect that and I am fully on board. I appreciate why anybody would want to lose weight, especially because living in a larger body in an aesthetically driven society is uncomfortable as f I think it's important as a nutrition professional who ultimately wants to help people that I hold space for those conversations rather than just shut them down or push them out. And while my approach will always be to focus on health promoting behaviors while letting the weight kind of do what it will, I think it's still important to work with the client and their goals. Now fourth, if being an anti-diet body positive dietitian in a smaller body means I can't acknowledge my own body struggles and the struggles of others in a society with impossible standards, then I guess I'm not body positive or anti-diet. I'm still crafting my message. I'm still learning. I'm still failing. But I do feel strongly that we all deserve to be at the table. We it's just crazy that, like, she, because of all of this stuff, like, it's so, it's so easy just to push people out of the, of the movement. And, like, this is something that we've seen a lot with, like, I've, I've had conversations with people that were in the Health at Every Size movement or were part of Fat Acceptance that have maybe decided, you know, I want to, um, I want to start losing a little bit of weight. Like, I really think that um, I'm a little bit, like, my, my weight is really causing me some problems. And then people will just kick you out super fast. And, like, that's what we're seeing. Basically, that's what, what's happening with Abby Sharp, but on the opposite side of the spectrum. Like, not because you want to lose weight, but because you slightly disagree with what we're saying you're not allowed to call yourself this thing anymore we all need to be part of the conversation and movement if we want to see the societal pressures around bodies ultimately change so that we can move towards a place of health and not restraint and on that note that is all for you guys today i know that was a quick little rant um, but i really would like to hear what you have to say and please please be kind in the comments this one was admittedly hard for me to articulate because I often feel really vulnerable being in the middle of what i see as kind of opposing ideology so the haze folks and the weight loss folks but if you like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Check out my colleague Abby's book. I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye. Well, all in all, like I said, <laughs> obviously I got a little bit triggered, you know, being called basically a dumb dumb. Um, but like I said, I didn't think that I was going to necessarily disagree with a lot of the stuff that she said and I, I don't necessarily disagree. And like this is stuff that I've said so many times. Like with people that, are, that get in that circle, it's like it's so – it can be so fast that you are kicked out ostracized like i've said this before about like tess holiday is like if she has if she ever decides that she wants to lose weight and wants to post about it like the amount of people that are just going to be so unbelievably upset with her is like very large and vast right and so i don't i don't envy being in that place i don't envy being where abby sharp is when she made this video i think that it was pretty um you know brave if that's a word you want to use but i i know that that she knew that there was going to be a lot of people that would very much so disagree with um what she had to say there so I am at least I think it's cool that she spoke her mind and said exactly what she thinks. Um, but yeah, I think that, that was uh, that was an interesting video for sure.